Hey guys, um, I have a new book that I'm going to start reading to you, and we're going to actually use this book for a lot of the discussion questions that we're going to be doing moving forward. Um, point of view is going to be the uh, one of the big things we're going to be focusing on over the next few weeks. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of background on this book right now, uh, and then I'm going to read the first chapter for you guys, okay? So the book is called Lemons, all right? You can see two of the main characters here at the bottom. And some of you might be able to guess who that character might be moving forward. So let me give you a little back, background about the story. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Lemonade, lemonade Liberty Wits, Mama always told her that. But Lem doesn't see how she could possibly make lemonade out of moving to Willow Creek, California, a tiny town that's filled with tall pines instead of skyscrapers and a Bigfoot lurking in the woods. Lem wanted to stay in San Francisco after her mama died, with her friends in school and everything she loved. Instead, she was forced to go live with the grandfather that she's never met. Then she meets quirky 11-year-old Tobin Skye. He's the CEO of Bigfoot Detectives, Inc., who is the sole Bigfoot investigator for their small town. After he invites Lem to be his assistant for the summer, the two set out on an epic adventure to capture the elusive creature on film. But Lem and Tobin's big discovery ends up being even more earth-shattering than they ever dreamed. So as I read this first chapter, what I want you guys to figure out is who do you think <coughs> is telling the story? Is it one of the characters? Is it, uh, is it the author of the book? Who do you think is telling the story as I read through it? Chapter one is titled, One Woolly Monster and a Weirdo Kid. Bigfoot. It's the very first thing I see when we pull into town. A gargantuan wooden statue of the hairy beast, stuck right smack in the middle of the square. Like he's the mayor, or President Ford, or someone real important like that. Where are we anyway? I asked a social worker who came to get me all the way down in San Francisco. I've only met her once before this, and I can't remember her name. I think it starts with a W, or maybe an M. There were two of them who came to visit. I can't remember the other lady's name either. This one must have drawn the short straw to have to drive me all the way down to this podunk place. We finally made it, Lemonade. Her eyes meet mine in the rearview mirror. They say Willow Creek is the Bigfoot capital of the world. You mean like that thing actually lives here? She smiles and makes a left turn down 7th Street. We're almost there. Should be just up this way a bit. This place is nothing like my home, and I already know I'm going to hate it. Tall pines instead of skyscrapers, dirt instead of sidewalks, and one woolly monster lurking somewhere in the forest. With my luck, his main food source is 10-year-old girls. I just want to go home, I mutter under my breath. Why can't I have just stayed with my teacher? I, I, I call up to her in the front seat. Miss Cotton said she loves having me there. She even told me I could stay. I'm sorry, Lemonade, she says, keeping her eyes on the road this time. I'm afraid that's not an option right now. There would have, have to be forms completed for that to happen permanently. Yeah, she would do that. She always has our papers corrected by the very next day. Just ask her. She'll tell you. Uh, I've already spoken to her about it, honey, she says. Believe me, if things change, you're going to be the first to know. I'll make sure and remind her. She promised to call me sometimes and write me letters, too. At least, I can go back someday. This time, the lady does not respond to me. I lay my head back on the seat, and I stick my arm out the window. The warm summer air grabs it, and my hand hangs ten on a wind wave, and I breathe in deep. Ah, smells like grass and dirt oh, and bugs. At home, the air smells like the ocean mixed with car exhaust and the glorious crispy fried egg rolls from Mr. Chin's restaurant down on the corner. He makes the best egg rolls in town. The sign in the window even says so. The sky tonight is a fire orange. Even though the sun is about out of sight behind the trees, leaving long, dark shadows between the pines that line the road. Which is the reason why I almost miss him. Some weirdo kid darts through the trees with binoculars hanging from his neck, and he's wearing a floppy tan safari hat folded up in front and held on by a strap under his chin. 
Across the underside of the brim are some kind of hand-painted letters. I can tell they say something real important, too, because why else would you have hand-painted letters anywhere? But he's running so fast, I can't read what they say. So my question to you for this first chapter is, who do, whose point of view do you think this is coming from? Who do you think is telling the story here? Is it Lemonade, the, 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 the child? Is it someone else, like the author, perhaps? Who do you think is telling the story um, of Lemons?